What is up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle Hallen, and I am back with another true crime video. And also, I want to remind you guys that CrimeCon is now only a month away. So if you haven't grabbed your tickets, definitely go and do so. I know that there are still some standard passes that are not sold out yet. So if you want to come and meet me, meet a bunch of great people, experts, sit through a lot of awesome panels, you can use my code Hallen when you go to purchase your ticket, and I hope to see you there. So today, I am bringing you guys a recent case that has hasn't received nearly as much media coverage as it needs. After I covered Riley Strain's disappearance in Nashville, Tennessee a few weeks ago, I received quite a few suggestions from you guys about another missing person. And it was the disappearance of 21-year-old Caleb Harris down in Corpus Christi, Texas. He went missing within days of Riley, but his case did not get nearly the same amount of coverage. And the energy that was put into finding Riley is exactly what could help solve Caleb's disappearance. Caleb vanished into thin air in the early morning hours of March 4th this year. Legitimately, it seemed as if he was just plucked up out of a parking lot and vanished to never be seen again. And his family, friends, and authorities are all actively seeking and heavily relying on tips from the public, specifically video footage, hoping it will help them find Caleb. So let's help amplify Caleb's story, share this video, the Facebook page, share his photo to hopefully get the attention of someone that may be able to help. 21-year-old Caleb Harris is very obviously a loved young man, and thankfully, the media that is out there does include several interviews with his family where they have the opportunity to share why Caleb is such a special guy. According to his parents, Becky and Randy, Caleb is very close to his family, especially his little sister. He keeps in constant communication with his mom and his dad. His mom had even just come to visit him days before he disappeared. And his sister was actually one of the very last people that had any communication with him before he vanished. He has a very tight circle and most of his friends have grown up with him throughout his entire childhood. He's loyal, always willing to lend a hand. He just seems to have been raised with great values by great parents. He also, growing up, had always been very musically inclined. Caleb can apparently pick up any string instrument and play it no problem, uh, but he does seem to love guitar the most. But one thing that he loves more than all of that is the outdoors. Caleb is always outside, whether he is hunting or fishing ever since he was little. And as he grew older, his love for it just exploded. So Caleb decided to attend Texas A&M University and Corpus Christi, where he is currently a sophomore. And as no surprise, he is studying environmental science. He hopes to land a career as a game warden or possibly somewhere in environmental law. His parents have said that he is a college kid, a typical college kid. He likes to have fun. Let's be realistic here, but he also has a really good head on his shoulders. He would drink occasionally. I don't think he smoked cigarettes, but they said his idea of a good time was a little bit different. He wasn't very focused on dating or parties. Caleb and his friends were way more likely to go to bed at like 7 p.m. so they could wake up at 4 a.m. to get in the duck blind. So that is like the kind of lifestyle that he liked to live. He lives and breathes being an outdoorsman. Now, I'm not saying he didn't go out and have fun and do all those things. He just was more of a homebody. He liked to be at his apartment. He liked to be in his routine. He was a creature of habit. Probably what led his loved ones to report him missing as quickly as they did. Now, Caleb is currently living at the Cottages, which is an apartment complex off of Ennis Jocelyn Road. And this area of Corpus Christi is heavily populated with college students. There are a few different apartment complexes in the area that specifically cater to college students. It was just a good, nice place to live. And his parents were huge fans of it when they were trying to help him pick it out because this complex in specific boasted high security. The entire complex is fenced in. It has two gated entrances as well as cameras to help keep the residents safe. And so far, it had been a really great place to live. His apartment itself was an ideal location. It was centrally located right by the pool and the clubhouse. It's relatively close to the water. Oso Bay is like a stone's throw away. Um, it's really close 
to all of the places that Caleb liked to fish. So it was, it was a good setup for a college kid. Now, just prior to his disappearance, Caleb was so excited about and planning for his future. Caleb had lined up a job for the summer in Alaska, which was going to be a huge adventure for him. And it also was going to tie right into his major. I can only imagine how excited he is for that. He also had started to pick out his classes for next year. He had just signed his lease for the next year in Corpus Christi, but something happened in the early morning hours of March 4th, and he hasn't been seen since. Sunday, March 3rd was a typical day for Caleb. He had been texting his dad back and forth that day, excited about a fishing trip that he had planned for the following day, Monday, March the 4th. And when Caleb went fishing, it was serious business, okay? It wasn't the willy-nilly fishing that I do where I just like throw whatever lure I think like sparkles the best into the water and hope that something grabs onto it. He has a plan, okay? He knew the species that he wanted to target, the bait that he needed to use, the exact location, the time of day, like he went with a purpose. So they were texting back and forth about the best lures, what he was hoping to catch, and he seemed really excited. So it was a complete shock when Caleb's roommates reached out to his mom that day, Monday the 4th, around noon saying that they had no idea where Caleb was and they had already notified the police. According to his roommate, and he had two of them, these roommates said that they woke up to get ready for school and they noticed that Caleb had ordered an Uber Eats order in the early morning hours of the 4th and the bag was still sitting on the doorstep of their apartment. Upon further inspection, Caleb's truck was still parked outside in the parking lot, his keys were still in the apartment, and so were his shoes and his wallet. So everything he would need to go anywhere was still there, but Caleb was not. When they tried his phone, it was going straight to voicemail, which was also, you know, completely unlike him. And so his roommates attempted to look for him briefly before they were like, we have got to call someone. Like this is how, out of character it was for Caleb to just vanish like that. And so they notified the police and then they called his family. And within minutes, his family was rushing to Corpus Christi to look for him and also to formally file a missing persons report. When authorities arrived at his apartment, they took a quick look around and there was no sign of an issue in the apartment. No signs of a struggle, no obvious signs of foul play. Obviously his roommates were really worried about him. All of his belongings were also still there, as I've already said. His truck was still locked. I mean, all electronics and chargers, it was just Caleb and his phone that were gone. And so the first thing CCPD wanted to do was nail down some sort of timeline of when exactly did he go missing. They wanted to understand what happened at what time and how did he go from having just like a casual Sunday to vanishing in the early morning hours. And so far, this is what they've been able to put together based on their most recent timeline that they have released. Caleb's roommates confirmed that they had spent the entire Sunday hanging out with him. They were playing video games, they were prepping for fishing the next day, and later that night at around 10 or 10.30 p.m., they were all excited because one of the roommates brought home a new puppy. Now, some reports do state that this was Caleb's puppy. It's not. It was either the roommates or the roommate's girlfriends, but regardless, they were viewing this as a community dog, okay? They wanted a little bug to go with them when they were kayaking and fishing and hunting. And so they were playing with the puppy. They were planning on going to get it a life fest the next day for their adventures. And so everything was great. Hung out for a few hours and at around 1 a.m., Caleb, his two roommates, and a friend that they were with were all captured on camera, taking the puppy out together out of the back door of their apartment. And to give you a bit of an idea of like the placement of their apartment, because it's a little different different than typical apartments, their back door was facing the parking lot. So it was a little backwards and the front door is actually leading out to this open grassy area, their sidewalks, the pool, the clubhouse. And so they had gone out of this back door and you can see that they're all in great spirits. They're happy, excited. Again, everything's totally fine. Now about an hour later at around 2 a.m., Caleb's roommates 
decided that they were going to call it a night. And so the friend that was with them left and the roommates headed to bed. But Caleb told them that he was going to stay up for just a little bit longer because he needed to get a few things done. He wanted to finish prepping his fishing rods for the next day. And he also had to order his lunch for the next day through Uber Eats. And this ended up being the last time that his roommates saw him. According to records that police have obtained, Caleb went on to place that Uber Eats order at around 2.20 a.m. He grabbed a few Red Bulls, some Lunchables, some apple pies, I think, all very typical things for him to get. And then about 20 minutes later at 2.44 a.m., Caleb sent a Snapchat. Now, he sent the Snapchat to his sister. It was a picture. And in it, he's barefoot and walking this puppy by himself outside of his apartment. And from my understanding, he wasn't captured on the ring camera this time, meaning that he likely had used the front door of the apartment, which would have taken him out into that grassy area near the pool and the clubhouse. And then another 20 minutes later, Caleb sent his last bit of communication before everything went completely dark. And this was a little bit weird. A Snapchat was sent at 3 3 a.m. from Caleb to his friend, his high school friend that lived in San Antonio, Texas. And the picture was just this weird, foggy, fuzzy picture of a bridge going over a drainage ditch. And this bridge is just outside of his apartment complex. And it just seems like a really random photo. There's no substance to it. I mean, there's no text overlay. There's no rhyme or reason to it. So everyone's obviously found this a little bit odd. I don't know if maybe he just wanted to show how creepy and foggy it looked. Who knows? But not even 10 minutes later at 3.12 a.m., Caleb's phone died or it was turned off. And the ping placed him as still being in the area around his apartment. Only eight minutes after his phone turned off at 3.20 a.m., Caleb's Uber driver arrived at his apartment and dropped off his order on the doorstep, which obviously he never went to get because this is the same order that his roommates had found just hours later. Now, this is as solid of a timeline as authorities have been able to get so far. Things have changed up a little bit. Things have been clarified a little bit, and I'm sure that things will probably continue to change as the investigation goes on. And while this does give kind of a good outline of what was going on, it leaves these small chunks of time unaccounted for where he vanished. And so a lot of this just seems to be guesswork and hoping they can fill in these blanks. You know that at some point, Caleb took the puppy back to the apartment because it was safe and sound. I know I'm gonna get a million questions about it. The puppy was fine. I have no idea if he still had the puppy with him when he sent that photo of the bridge. Maybe that can explain why he was over that way to take the puppy on a walk. Again, we just don't know. But clearly after Caleb took the puppy back to the apartment, he for some reason went back outside. And it seems based on all of the information that we do have that he had no intentions of being gone for very long. Caleb didn't ever put shoes on. We know he was barefoot in the Snapchat to his sister, and apparently all of his shoes were accounted for at the house. He also didn't take his wallet. He didn't take his keys. So it seems most plausible that Caleb went outside to wait on his Uber Eats delivery. But if he was just hanging out outside waiting for that, what on earth happened to him right outside of his apartment? So CCPD started going door to door asking for tips and hoping that maybe someone else had surveillance that could point them in some sort of direction. They also ended up searching 30 some vacant apartments just in case he ended up there. And ultimately, I believe they received somewhere around like 27 different clips of surveillance from businesses, other apartments, things like that. However, it doesn't seem that Caleb was captured on anything, but it's hard to say for sure because of the conditions that night. As you saw in that photo of the bridge, it was very foggy. And so a lot of cameras were only picking things up that were directly in front of them. And even more disappointing, the apartment complex wasn't nearly as security conscious as Caleb's parents initially believed it to be. So there are only two ways in and out of the complex. There's the main entrance that takes you out onto Ennis Joslin Road, and you can either go left or right out of this entrance. And then there's also a side entrance that takes you out onto Williams Drive. 
But according to the most recent photos on Google Maps, this road is just a dead end road that is the length of the complex and it empties out onto Ennis Jocelyn Road. And every photo I have found of this side entrance shows it closed off, marked off with cones. So I'm not even sure it's a usable entrance. And this could mean that if there was proper security footage at the apartment, every single car in and out, every person in and out of that front entrance because everything was fenced in would have potentially been captured. But when they approached the complex for this footage, they were told that none of the cameras were even in working condition. But it gets even worse. They next hoped that maybe they could rely on the gated entrance, but this could potentially help narrow down who was active in the community around that time, at least by car. At this point, Caleb just vanished from the middle of a parking lot. So either he walked off barefoot on his own or he got into the car with someone. But unfortunately, they were told that the gates were fully open throughout the night. So anyone who felt like it could have access to this community. And because the cameras didn't work, there was no way to tell who it was. So the search for information was already off to a really rocky start. I am so thankful that they were able to get all the footage that they did and that the community seemed to be very forthcoming with all of this and wanting to be as helpful as possible. But it is so irritating to know that so much could have been gathered from the apartment properly having their security footage out there, properly keeping their gates in order. The police pushed forward. And at this point, they obviously need to speak to the people that are closest to Caleb. The last people that saw him were with him. And that would be his roommates, the friend that he was last seen with on the surveillance, and also that Uber driver who just so happened to show up around the time that he disappeared. But after questioning all of them several times, I have even seen that some of them agreed to a polygraph. Authorities announced that quote, detectives at this point have no reason to suspect any of these individuals had anything to do with Harris's disappearance. According to not just the police, but also Caleb's family, his roommates, his friend, they're all devastated. They have done everything they can to help. And the woman that delivered his Uber Eats order was also as helpful as she could possibly be. And from what police have released, she has stated she didn't see anyone. She didn't see Caleb. There was nothing at all when she dropped off the order. And from one article that I was able to find, find, they were also even able to further confirm this Uber driver was not involved in his disappearance through nearby surveillance footage. They were able to see that she came alone and she left alone. They confirmed the time of everything. So now they are again back at square one. And so they started to worry that maybe this was some sort of hit and run accident because it was so foggy that night and Caleb had obviously just been kind of roaming around the neighborhood in the dark. It was possible someone didn't see him and hit him. And so they checked all of the road outside of the apartment complex for signs of this. They also called around to all of the local hospitals to make sure no one had been brought in in those early morning hours. But all of this was to no avail. So they were able to at least rule out this possibility. So at this point, their best bet was to just start searching on foot. Now, because Caleb's phone was last known to be in the vicinity of his apartment when it turned off or died, searches began in that area on foot. They searched all around Caleb's complex. They searched neighboring complexes, and they also checked a nearby creek, that same one that runs under the bridge in that Snapchat picture that he took. According to his family, there wasn't even any running water in this creek at the time. When they went to search it, it was basically just one big mud pit and that was about it. So it's not like he fell over for any reason um, and was pulled downstream. By going hand in hand, walking extreme lengths of this creek, they weren't finding anything. Caleb's friends and family also spent every single moment they could searching for him. So this was a huge community effort. They were driving down every street. They walked through all of the nearby woods. It's a marshy area as well, so it can be very challenging to search. They checked in ditches and tunnels. They were shaking down bushes, all of the videos of his friends and his family and the community looking for him. I mean, they're having to like pull each other up these ravines they really worth stopping at nothing to try to find any sign of Caleb. And to give you a better idea of the area around his apartment, I don't want to say it's odd because I have no way to explain why I feel like it's an odd place for someone to go missing. So I'm hoping you guys just kind of pick up on what I am. But he's on this kind of like random side road. It's not even really like a very central location. And 
his apartment complex is surrounded by these open, empty, desolate fields. Now, to the left, the mainland side of his apartment, it's those fields and more residential housing, like tons of it. And then to the other side, there's not really that much land between his apartment and the bay. And probably the most alarming thing in that area is a major highway. There's also shopping, there's apartments, and searches started to spread out in all of these different areas. They started to walk the bay along the Oso Bay. There were searchers in the water. They had aerial searches happening and volunteers even helped to take Caleb's family in the air so that they could help search that way as well. And from what I've seen, they weren't finding anything. There was no sign that Caleb ended up in any of these areas. So like I said, it really seems like he was plucked out of this parking lot and vanished. Over the next few weeks, the searches did expand to all of these areas. They've checked at this point all over Corpus Christi. Authorities have even gone to several other cities in Texas following potential leads. They've announced they've gone to San Antonio. They've gone to New Braunfels. While they haven't openly spoken about what specifically led them there, um, my guess is they went to New Braunfels because that's where Caleb's originally from. It's where his family's from. And San Antonio is where that high school friend lived. The very last person he sent any communication to. Yeah. But it's again, been more than two weeks since 21 year old Caleb Harris vanished. I spoke with a friend close to the Harris family who is leading other search efforts to find him. To think that somebody like um, Caleb would go missing is a little scary. Priscilla Carlisle has known the Harris family for more than a decade. She watched Caleb grow up as he and her daughter went to school together. She recalls the moment that she heard of his disappearance. My daughter Ellie um, called me and the first moment that I heard Caleb was missing, I remember saying, what do you mean missing? What are you talking about? Within hours, the Carlisle family drove down to Corpus Christi to help the Harris family find him. Shaking the bushes, checking the ditches, looking in the, the tunnels, and I find myself doing that just as I'm driving along the road. I'm looking in the wooded areas and, you know, just trying to pay attention to details that I might ordinarily not pay attention to. With permission from Caleb's family, Carlisle created a Facebook group to plan search efforts and post important updates. However, other pages have also been created, not verified by the family. Carlisle adds that people have also posted inaccurate information, false predictions, and conspiracies about the Harris family. It's really just so that I can help kind of vet the stuff that comes out. And there really is a lot of information that is not accurate. Two GoFundMe pages were also made by close friends to raise money in support of the family and those participating in the search. Although Caleb still has not been found, Carlisle says the Harris family has not given up. The Harris family is really grateful. We are continuing to help bring him home. Whether they know Caleb or not, Carlisle is hoping that people in the community will do their part to bring him home safely. If you were in this position and your son, your 21 year old son was missing, what would you want people to do? They still need your help. Because all of these searches just didn't seem to be lending any sort of answers, authorities started to focus a lot on Caleb's electronics. I know that they've taken everything that he had left behind at his apartment. I am sure at this point they've obtained some sort of, you know, subpoena for his phone records. Authorities are really keeping everything close to the vest. So it's really hard to tell what information they have because there seems to be such minimum information in this that everything they do get is like, pure gold. At this point, there are a ton of different people working on this case. The FBI, the U.S. Marshals, Corpus Christi Criminal Investigation Division. That is a mouthful. Um, the organized crime units working on it. They have crime analysts, digital forensics. I mean, everyone is looking into this to make sure there is nothing that they are missing. They also have a few different search teams involved. I know that Texas Search and Rescue has been helping. They've at least been in touch with Texas EquiSearch. So there's a lot of hands on deck, which could mean that they know a lot that the public doesn't yet, or it's so wide open that they are tackling this from every single angle to try to narrow things down. But unfortunately, right now, we just don't know which one it is. Despite the fact that authorities have scaled back their ground searches, I do know that Caleb's friends and family and complete strangers are still out there actively looking for him. I don't know if there are any of those organizations that are still performing ground 
around searches. I know that it can be very tricky in situations like this because when they have no solid evidence pointing them to a place to start, they usually don't search without that because it can just waste a lot of time and money and manpower. Everyone from the Corpus Christi Police Department to Caleb's family has expressed how beyond grateful they are that people are willing to give up their time, their energy to go out there and look for any sign of him. So many people out there who are helping uh, search, mm -hmm. volunteers who are out there, you know, people coming in from outside the city to help in those search efforts. What advice do you have for them to stay safe while they are searching? I was out with a small group of people yesterday and they were going through some pretty difficult elements, the mud, uh, the brush, and so, the, and they were coming across some homeless encampments as well. You know, first of all, I think it's incredible. The, the response that has come from our community, uh, Caleb's community, New Braunfels and San Antonio, his friends, the university, it, it's, it's really an incredible uh, thing to see from our standpoint that that many people are willing to take time out of their day and go out and search for this young man. It's just, it, it's an incredible uh, a thing to see from, from law enforcement side. To answer your question, we want them to be uh, as cautious as possible and, and use as much safety techniques and sef safety tactics as they can. The brush around here is heavy, it's thick, you can easily uh, you know, cut yourself. There's broken glass, there's, there's all kinds of things, fish hooks in a lot of these areas that they're going around in, and also uh, venomous snakes. We have, we have uh, uh, rattlers and uh, water moccasins and things like that in those areas, so they need to be very cautious when they're doing those searches. Additionally, one of the things that we, uh, we saw was, uh, that I have seen on social media is going down into uh, enclosed areas like culverts, enclosed drainage pipes, things like that. Our dive team, when they did their search, they actually have equipment uh, that, that we use al along with the fire department to detect uh, uh, dangerous gases. And uh, we were actually told, do not go in that drainage ditch uh, or that one drainage culvert, uh, enclosed culvert because uh, there could be methane gas and whatnot in there. So we would certainly encourage them to be very cautious if they have any of that type of uh, safety equipment available to test before they go in there because we'd hate to see another tragedy with people that are doing the right thing for the right reason and we would certainly hate to see anybody get hurt or you know or seriously injured. His family has put out a reward for any information leading to him and it was initially at 25,000 which was already massive but they have since bumped it up to 50,000 and his dad and a family friend have even stated that they're willing to keep on upping this reward hoping it eventually brings someone forward and not only are volunteers helping in physical searches but the community is also helping and so many other ways. Students at his school have come together to pray for his safe return. People are putting up flyers, they've donated billboards, and they're even holding vigils to support Caleb's family. Also been to GoFundMe pages that have been started to support this family through a time that nobody ever wants to experience. And I have both of those listed down below. One of the GoFundMes is specifically to raise money for the reward, and the other is just to help his family out with these expenses that they are getting because they're having to travel to this area. They're doing all these searches. They are, you know, trying everything they can. You know, worrying about money and how you're going to have a place to stay and how you're going to take time off of work should be the last thing that you have to be concerned about. A large turnout tonight as friends and family of Caleb Harris are holding two vigils for him at the same time. One here at Landa Park in New Braunfels, his hometown, and one in Corpus Christi where he attends college and where he was last seen near his apartment complex exactly one month ago. Go. Each flame a beacon, lighting his weary way. Poems and prayers in New Braunfels, a candlelight vigil for Caleb to light his way home. Have him come home to us where he belongs. As he prays for a miracle night and day. The same scene in Corpus. There's more power in prayer and more people that are praying, the, the better. And so we decided to do it at the same time. 30 seconds of silence, one for each day Caleb's been missing. This past month, unbearably hard for his mom, Becky. It feels like it's not happening to me. It's somebody else's story. And so it um, makes it 
surreal. I have no idea what happened. We, I, I feel strongly that he was taken. No shoes, no car keys, no wallet, just gone. But I still feel strongly that we will find him. Corpus police say they have a team of detectives working the case. Volunteers and crews have searched hundreds of acres in and around his complex. They've combed through surveillance video, but the night was so foggy, it's hard to see. Maybe you have a friend, a neighbor, a relative. If they have a house or a, a condo down there, ask them to check their cameras. There's cameras everywhere, and we just really need people checking those cameras. Somebody has had to see something, and somebody knows where he is. Yep. Bring awareness and just keep on with the search and believing in God and hope that this young man is going to be found. You have people that are praying mm -hmm. and still searching for you. We are not going to give up. Now, obviously, with a case like this, just like in Riley Strain's case, there are quite a few theories out there. And some of them are great. Some of them are wild. Unfortunately, some of them have targeted the family. And so I'm only going to be speaking on things that authorities themselves or his family have directly spoken about. And I'll start off with his mom. Caleb's mom has stated on the news that she personally believes Caleb was taken, whether that be from his apartment parking lot or maybe that area by the bridge that's quite quiet and dark. Caleb is known for being helpful, which is a great quality to have, but unfortunately, it is also a huge possibility that someone like that can easily be taken advantage of. If he had been out walking the puppy by that bridge or walking by the bridge waiting for his Uber Eats food and saw someone in need of help, he absolutely would have stopped to do something for them. However, what's off to me about this possibility is what are the chances that he goes out at a random time in the middle of the night and and somehow there in this random place in Corpus Christi, there's someone with bad intentions that stumbles across him. And on top of that, I think it would be very difficult for just one person with bad intentions to take Caleb down without a fight. He's a pretty big guy. Caleb's 5'11", he weighs around 180 pounds, he's very active, so he's muscular, and he wouldn't have just easily been like thrown into a car and taken away. And also being near a field like that, potentially being near this bridge and drainage ditch, there usually are a lot of of echoes going around in those kinds of areas. So I feel like someone would have heard something if he had been ambushed by someone. So this brings us to the next possible theory that people have been questioning, that maybe Caleb left the area with someone that he knows. This happened so quick. He sent the Snapchat at 3.03 and by 3.12, his phone was off. 3.20, this Uber driver confirms he's nowhere to be found. So when you think about how fast this occurred and how quietly he disappears, it may makes it seem like maybe he got into the car with a friend. Why would Caleb leave his apartment to go out with someone, get in a car and leave somewhere without his shoes on? And you would think with his two roommates back behind in the apartment, a new puppy, like all of his gear that he loves so much and means the world to him, that he would lock the door and leave. But he didn't bring his keys and yet to see if his roommates woke up the next day and the door was locked. He also had a food delivery on the way. I just feel like so much of this does not make sense with this idea that he randomly decided to up and leave with a friend. And I genuinely do feel like if this was the case, police would know this by now and we would be getting more information that suggests this is what happened. Now, obviously there's also the possibility maybe he was in a bad mental state. Maybe he decided to harm himself since everything is on the table, which police have confirmed at this point. That's something that needs to be considered. But his family has very clearly stated in multiple interviews that Caleb has never had any issues with his physical health or his mental health. And how things played out that day, even up until minutes before everything went dark, it just doesn't exactly support this idea that mental health is a likely factor in this. Again, as I preface all conversations like this, you just never know. But one thing I am able to confirm is that all of his guns that he had for hunting have been accounted for, and so have all of his roommate's guns. So then that leaves us with the possibility that maybe he just headed off on his own. But just like all of the other potential theories, there are issues with this. Again, why without shoes? Why without keys? Why not take his car? I mean, I feel like I could go on and on and on with each one of these potential theories. He had also already ordered food for himself. So why on earth would he have had a need to leave at three in the morning? The only places that were open in the nearby shopping center within walking distance 
distance would have been a Whataburger as well as an emergency room and I think possibly a gas station somewhere nearby. From the way it's been described, he wasn't picked up on any of these business cameras. So where on earth would he have gone? And so some started to theorize that maybe he just randomly decided to go fishing in Oso Bay. And this seems like a pretty plausible possibility. He was excited to fish. Maybe he was so excited that he wanted to go ahead and go. He got up early all of the time to hunt. Tons of people night fish. So this isn't really a stretch. However, when they started looking into all of the evidence, it suggests that this isn't likely either. First of all, Caleb had very specific spots that he would go and fish. And according to his dad, while Oso Bay was the closest body of water, it was definitely not a place Caleb went fishing. All of his favorite spots require transportation of some kind. So Mustang Island, North Padre Island, and his car obviously hadn't gone anywhere. Fishing also requires fishing poles and all of Caleb's gear was also accounted for inside of the apartment. And his dad also stated that Caleb never goes fishing or hunting alone. So I'm sure you're able to see at this point why police have not been able to rule out anything. Every workable theory seems to have things supporting it while also having things go against it. And there's nothing that really jumps out, at least from the evidence that we have been supplied, really points to any of these being the most likely. But his family really stands by the idea that Caleb did not plan on going anywhere for long. Like I've already stated, it wasn't at all abnormal for him to be barefoot. So if he was just taking a walk to the car real quick or out to the pool area, he wasn't going to throw some shoes on. But for him to fully leave the area with someone or even by himself, that's something that they said it's not likely he would do. Now, his family is holding out hope that they will get the answers they are looking for. And despite the fact that things are really quiet on CCPD's end, everyone is being reassured that there's a lot happening in the background. And with all of these different hands in the pot looking into this case, I could not see any reason why this case would be sitting stagnant. And it seems that the line of communication is also still great between CCPD and Caleb's family, which in all honesty is all you can ask for and is the most important thing in all of this right now. There are so many different ways that you can help Caleb's family. And you guys saw all of the things that happened for Riley Strain, all of the people that drove hours to go and look for him, that spent time sharing his story. He was all over TikTok, all over YouTube. Caleb needs that exact same attention. You can share his flyer. If you're local, go and put some up at nearby businesses. You can participate in volunteer searches, every single person helping and every Every single second counts. Despite what it may seem like in this case, people don't simply just disappear. There are answers out there. It's just about finding them. There's been a lot of on and off media coverage in Caleb's case and consistency and keeping his face out there is the most important thing right now. There's not really been a lot in the past three weeks that I've been able to find. It seems it's been very quiet since then. There was a vigil, you know, there was the one month mark, and then it seems that things really started to quiet down a bit. So take a few minutes to do what you can to help Caleb and his family. I will make sure to keep you guys as updated as possible again, go and check out the Facebook page that's been created by his family. Donate to one of the GoFundMes if you are able to. That's all that I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen to Caleb's story. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below to become a part of the Howland fam so that we can hopefully bring them home together or bring them justice together. And I will see you guys in my next video.